Hi, I'm Per Eriksson. So here we are in Sweden and we're on our way to Stockholm to the one Michelin star restaurant Gastrologic. And we're there to meet with the chefs Anton Bjur and Jakob Holmström. As you can see, I'm driving in Audi A5 e-tron that runs on biogas. And as you all know, biogas is made from waste from restaurants and the food industry. Audi is focusing on sustainability and so are the top chefs in Sweden and in the rest of the world. Let's see if you can combine a taste of Sweden and how you can link that to a more sustainable and environmental consciousness. with Anton Bjur and Jakob Holmström. Yes. So Jakob, yes. Uh, if you were to explain for somebody that's never been to mm -hmm. Gastrologic about your style of cooking, what would you say? Might be a cliche, but it, 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 it's a logic way of doing gastronomy. Uh, and uh, I think it's a very honest way of cooking. I mean, uh, basically the whole philosophy is to work with what's around us, uh, working with, uh, with, the, with the nature and with the producers. Uh, that's why we never had a menu at the restaurant. So uh, if you come here as a guest, you will never read beforehand what you're about to experience. Uh, the first impression of the food will be when you have it in front of you. And this allows us as chefs to uh, uh, fully uh, work with the nature and the producers uh, so we can basically change ingredients the same day if, if, if needed to. Uh, we can put a new course on the menu just for one night uh, if, if, if there's an ingredient that's only available for a short amount of time we can just serve it for one table that night. Uh, it's a modern <laughs> Swedish restaurant and um, it's all based on the produce that we have around us, surrounding us following the seasons and it's the people behind the produce I mean it's the farmers it's the forager it is the uh, the hunter and I mean they make it all possible for us to be creative work alongside with them work with what they have and um, to be inspired I would say we're inspired by nature and the seasons and talking about uh, your close relationship with the, the producers. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you find the right produce or products to be able to create your uh, wonderful dishes? It's about working with uh, finding good people to work with and uh, see how they care about their things the way we, that we love cooking them. You know, it's that that uh, collaboration. <clears throat> I mean, when it comes to to farmers, if we start with that, with, with uh, vegetables, we have uh, we work with a couple of gardens, depending on uh, when during the year it is, depending on the produce it is for the moment, uh, because some have better root vegetables, for example, some have better uh, green, uh, what do you call it, leafy vegetables in a way, and so on. Actually, sometimes we don't know what the right produce is until we have it in front of us. Uh, for example, we uh, we'll start with the perfect course in our mind, it always starts at the farmer's place, if you understand what I mean. Uh, first of all, we go there, we see what's available, uh, we bring it to a kitchen and we try something out, and then that's where the action takes place, if you understand what I mean. So, when finding the right produce, as you say, uh, what are you looking for, or what is the thing that makes you tick? Yeah, exactly. Um, that's interesting, because there can be many factors to this. Uh, one, if of course, like the most obvious one, flavor. Uh, I personally, right now, like to dig into what Sweden has to offer and not just what is available here, but also what is historical Swedish. 
if you look into like historical breeds, uh, historical crops and so on. That's, that's something I find very interesting right now. Uh, to look into how we used to do things here, what is heritage and what isn't, what is new, what is influenced from abroad and so on. Uh, finding something that's very unique for this area or this part of Sweden. Sometimes it's just because it's a, it's a typical thing from, for where we are now. I mean, it's a really seasonal thing or something super obvious like a, a, a color or a texture. You know, usually it is what you try to lift from it. If it's, for, of course, flavor, but you have textures, you have colors, you have shapes. Um, try to, what is the best way to, for us here at the restaurant to kind of cook it our way and, and, and showcase it the best way possible. Gastrologic being one of the top restaurants in, the in, world. in Scandinavia, I would say, <laughs> or even in the world. Uh, you find your fantastic produce or products around in this area. Yep. Uh, you're looking for the specific thing that mm. makes you tick. Uh, mm. uh, but do you find that there is such a thing as a, a taste of Sweden? Of course. But I think it's different to everyone. I think it, the, the taste of Sweden, to me, it's even different, different to, to Jacob, I would say. It, it's, it's personal, but definitely, we can definitely put the taste of uh, Sweden and taste of Stockholm here. If you ask me for, for five certain tastes of Sweden, I would give you, you know, things like anchovies, dill, new potatoes and so on. Uh, but for someone else, it might be, you know, something completely other. And I think for a tourist or a, a, a forger coming to our restaurant from another country, it can be something completely else. So yeah, there is most definitely a taste of Sweden. Uh, you know there's a big trend among the top restaurants in the world. Uh, they use the concept no waste kitchen. Mm. And Sweden is one of the most uh, sustainable countries in the world mm. with a very high level of environmental consciousness. Mm. What's your take on that? It's definitely, or it is important, it, it, of, of course it is, I mean, we should know, we work 100% with nature uh, and, and sourcing all of our ingredients very naturally. We go meet the farmers, we forage, some of it ourselves even. Um, we even go, uh, you know, alongside with the farmers and so on. Uh, so we see that part very very clear um, and then you have the other end of the, the industry where there, there is all the waste and, and, and everything that goes to waste uh, that's a little bit tougher because uh, I mean we we're a restaurant that are striving towards certain goals and uh, we want to deliver a product that is very demanding it, it needs to be perfect our guests expect it to be perfect and uh, to do that 100% waste free that is really tough it's good that it has become a trend uh, it's, it's more to it than that, but of course, it's, that's how things start, in a way. But it's important, it is, uh, I mean, it's all about care. We have to care, not only about, we have to care about everything, about how we live, how we eat, what we eat, you know. I think it's, it's, it's a really big, it's a big issue that we really have to, to consider and work, and work with. But uh, like I said, Sweden, yeah, we, I think we work in have good programs for this and of course we're gonna we have to do our part I would say at a restaurant because we have we can impact a lot of people but it's a very important topic that you need to pay attention to especially if you serve a 20 course dinner uh, that takes around like three hours to eat but more than anything it takes around 20 hours to prep uh, gastrologic uh, now being one of Scandinavian star restaurants. Mm. Uh, it's always packed here, hard to get table. Uh, you're looking constantly for new product or produce to be able to create new dishes on your no menu evenings. Yeah. Uh, but where will you go from now? Uh, do you have to go anywhere from now? Um, I mean, we started off around, I think it was yeah six years ago, a little bit more, uh, and it. In one way, it feels like we just started. I mean, we've never been better than we are right now. Uh, but I like to be able to say that every day when I go home for work, that every day we become a little bit better. 
Uh, and it doesn't just have to do with food, it has to do with everything. Like we talked a little bit about it before, about working with nature, taking care of nature, uh, you know, working in a sustainable way, that's something we can do much better than we do. Just on an everyday basis, just try to become better and better. And like I said, it's, it's in all the different terms of the restaurant. It's the food, the service, how do we work with things, um, and so on. So, yeah, well, I think we've done a lot. Um, I'm proud of what we've been doing, but um, there is still a lot, a lot of things out there to be done, I would say. You're a duo here. Mm -hmm. uh, in German, yeah. they, call, they have a, an expression that is called super spitze, mm. which means that when you are a duo, you can challenge yeah. or take advantage or use each other mm -hmm. for something. What's your take on that? <laughs> That's perfect. Easy. Jacob do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> and I ride along. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, yeah, for sure. I mean, I never had a restaurant on my own. This is the restaurant uh, we, uh, we open together and we run together. And I never, I would say this is, this is the only way, I think, for now at least. And I believed in this for so many years. It's six years now and hopefully it's going to be more. But I mean, yes, you do get, I think it's easier, like you said, to get the best out of each other because we're different as, uh, as persons, we have different mentalities, we have different skills. And we, I mean, that's how it started. We have different skills. Um, Jacob is doing all the savory, and I do pastry, um, or the sweet servings. And I would never be able to achieve what we've been doing with Gastrologic on my own. If you were to give a young person that wants to become a chef an advice, what would that be? Find yourself as a chef, create your own philosophy, your own values, uh, and, and so on, and work hard. But uh, being a chef means usually working in a restaurant, which means you have to love working with people.